Diane Dayton. We're at the 23rd Annual Boz Cosberg's Jazz Fest in Reading, Pennsylvania. Catching up right now with Andrew New. How you doing, Andrew? I'm doing great. Well, you've been all around the world and then some since we spoke last. It's, it's been a lot of fun. I've been, I like to say I've been living vicariously through myself lately. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's pick up at a, a point. Diane Shore, mm -hmm. you did some traveling with her. I did, yeah. I actually first met Diane, I don't know, maybe five years ago. We, we did a concert with the Philly Pops. And I've been a member of the Philly Pops for, for many years. And she came in, and, and you know, I actually played a solo on one of her tunes, Louisiana Sunday Afternoon, which is mm. one of her hits. And she, were, you know, we chatted afterwards. She liked what I did, and then we connected again about two years ago when she had a new record coming out, and uh, we did a show in New York. And then after that, we've been uh, traveling the world. This is actually with her small band too, which is really neat because you really get to interact with her. She plays piano, mm -hmm. and she will just go in any direction. Mm -hmm. And you just got to follow her, which is great. I mean, it's re it's really a true jazz gig, and she's an, uh, an unbelievable jazz singer, a force of nature, you know. Wow, that's wonderful. Smokey Robinson. Smokey is is obviously a legend. I mean, we all know Smokey. We all grew up listening to his music, and uh, I've been very fortunate because he he does have a regular saxophone player who also plays with Blood, Sweat, and Tears. And when they're busy, they've been calling me. And the piano player on that gig is the music director, and he's a very dear friend of mine. And he plays in my band together, named Demetrius Pappas. Mm. So it really kind of all kept it nice in the family there, and, and you know, Smokey is a real musician, he's a songwriter, he loves doing his craft, I mean, he actually wants to be out there on the road mm -hmm. more than anything, so he loves what he does. And that's what I like about all these musicians that I work with, is they love their craft. Mm -hmm. You also have performed with a lot of people. One of the people, Peter White, mm -hmm. you did a song with Peter. I did, did really I did. well, too. Uh, yeah, it was a number one hit. Uh, the, was the, the tune was the number one song, and the, uh, the album was number one. Uh, and I actually played on five tracks on the record. So I did flute and alto sax, tenor sax, and soprano sax on that, actually. And we recorded it out in L.A. at his studio out there. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun. And, and you know, he's, everything he, he does just turns to gold, which is great. And he's such a sweet person, mm -hmm. and I love his vibe, and he's very laid back and kind of quirky, and yeah. that's cool. That is cool. Yeah. You've been doing some things with Bobby Caldwell. How did that all come about? Um, it was very lucky, you know, and I always say this, there's no such thing as good luck in this industry. It's only good preparation, because you never know who's going to be in the audience, who's going to hear you, who's going to walk through that door. So you always want to be on top of your game whenever you're playing. Um, and I'm, I'm just very, very uh, uh, con concerned about preparation. I always want to make sure I know I'm ready to go when I when I go out on stage. And I happen to be doing a concert somewhere and, and Bobby's wife came came into the mm. show. She liked what I heard. My last record, I think it was my second record in Clearview, was charting at the time. So she kind of knew who I was and just very, you know, we had a nice chat like this and I said, hey, if Bobby ever needs someone, I'm a big fan. I'm thinking maybe, I don't know, down the line a couple years later, mm -hmm. you need someone for a big band show like we did last night. And sure enough, three days later, he calls me up. Oh, wow. And I uh, needed uh, me to cover a gig out in Santa Barbara. And I started subbing on the band. And then uh, in the last couple of years, I've been with him full time. And uh, uh, we've been to Japan two times. We're going back uh, in, in October this year. We, uh, he recorded on my last record. Mm -hmm. uh, we did one of his tunes, Next Time I Fall in Love. That was my last radio hit. And uh, I recorded on his new record, House of Cards, mm -hmm. uh, along with Dave Costas on the record. And uh, we wrote a song together for my new record, which is coming out June 4th. Wow. Tell me more about the new record. It's called Everything Happens for a Reason. And actually, the title comes from a tune that I wrote after I was here, I think, two years ago. Uh, we were actually supposed to go to Bermuda for another show. and that fell through and things we, we were able to turn our schedule around and we ended up doing or I ended up doing a bunch of shows here mm -hmm. and I was pretty inspired coming back from that and I felt you know I really wanted to go to Bermuda but I was so happy I came here and a lot of times as the best laid plans always go out the window and you, you make do with what happens but sometimes it actually is better than what you had in mind mm -hmm. and so I wrote this tune and ended up becoming the title track of the record and um, so we had that tune uh, the tune that Bobby and I wrote together was a it was actually an old jazz standard type of a tune that I wrote years ago it was an instrumental I brought it to Bobby and said you know what I really hear you singing this would you write some words for me mm -hmm. so it's a tune called what would I do and uh, we have a full 40-piece string orchestra on there. Oh, wow. oh yeah, we didn't mess around. There's, it's, it's a very big record. So we have mm. strings on four of the tunes. Uh, Brian Bromberg produced. Uh, Steve Oliver produced two tunes. Uh, Jeff Lorber's on the record. Rick Braun is on the record. We have a full horn section, the full strings. Uh, my big brother played trumpet on, on something. It was neat, you know. Oh, it was, it, cool. It's a very, it's, a, it's light years ahead of what I've done in the past. And I'm so proud of the records that I've done in the past, but this is just a whole nother level. Wow. This is really exciting to be doing what you love, what you're 
excellent at and what you're passionate about. How has it been touring? I mean, you've been doing a lot lately. Yeah, um, it's, it's, I, I enjoy traveling. I like being on the road. I mean, I was always a person that had this kind of sense of wanderlust. I like to go, when I, when I go into these towns, I like to explore. I like mm -hmm. to get out there. In fact, uh, you know, some of my great memories from last year was, was bike riding through uh, Shanghai and Beijing when I was oh, in China okay. last year. And it's just so cool because you got everyone, you're out there in the real world. You're not seeing, you're not seeing the country from the window of a bus, you mm -hmm. know? And that's really cool because the smells, um, just the people coming up to you, and they see someone like me with curly blonde hair, and, <laughs> and people that don't, don't even know me, they want to get their picture taken with me because I guess I'm <laughs> funny looking. I don't know. <laughs> a little novel there, I guess right? So, but when you're walking through Tiananmen Square in, in, in China, it's like, I guess I'm, I'm something, you know, I'm a little unique, so. <laughs> well, we always talk about music being the great connector mm -hmm. and the universal language. When, when you're there in places like that, how are you received? You know, I mean, it's very true that, that we would have crews that would come in and help us out and none of them spoke English. And that was always a challenge, but in the end, you know, once we start playing, everything kind of falls into place and the audience you're able to pull them over under your side and you start to get excited about the music that you're playing you connect with the musicians around you then the audience starts to pick up on that and then they start to get excited and then you start to pick up on that excitement coming back at you and there's this whole kind of dynamic emotional exchange that's going back and forth between the musicians and the audience and mm -hmm. it just keeps going around and around and it's a beautiful thing and that's what it's really all about isn't oh yeah it? yeah absolutely making someone you know bob their head back and forth or clap their hands or just looking in the audience and seeing people smiling mm -hmm. i mean something as simple like that is it's it's really really neat and people come up to me and say you know I was feeling really depressed and then I put your record on and it makes me feel so happy. I put mm -hmm. it on in the car when I'm sleepy and I want to get, get charged yeah. up and yeah. coming to this concert, you know, I was, everything was going on during the day and it just made me sad and I came here and now I feel great. So, yeah. I mean, that's, that's really neat to be able to touch people that yeah. way and, you know, I see people with, with real jobs, you know, they work in an office <laughs> somewhere and, and I feel, you know, I'm, I'm something of a, of a bohemian, I'm working at nights, I'm working on weekends and I'm going to cool places and, yeah. and doing what other people look at is fun. It's still work for me, but I mm -hmm. love my job and if you love your job, you never work a day in your life. That's right, and it's great to be living your dream, isn't it? Oh yeah, it? absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much for taking time oh, you today. Bet, Can't wait to check out the new album when it comes it's out. It's exciting. I think yeah. you're gonna like it. It sounds good. Thanks, Thanks so much. All right. We're coming to you from the 23rd annual Boscov's Books Jazz Fest in Redding, Pennsylvania. Thank you.